Okay, this video is uh, to guide you through the signing up process for Edmodo. So if you go to www.edmodo.com or find it through a search engine, you will get to this page. You can see here you've got login. So once you've made your account, you do not have to set it up each time. You just click login. But to sign up, you can either click here or here. Uh, I'm going to go for this one. As you can see here, there are three different types of accounts. One of the things that I really like about Edmodo is the fact that you can actually have the teacher account, a student account and the parent account. So it's all three of these working together. Now, with some of the students, you may find that some of them are not doing the work, in which case having the parent account connected directly to them is really helpful. Um, it may be that some of the parents are not sure at this time what work you are setting. Uh, if they have a parent account through Edmodo, they can see what work you are setting for your students very easily and very quickly and actually can see how they are doing on the assignments and quizzes. We're going to look at assignments and quizzes in a future video. Uh, assignments, you have to mark. Quizzes, most of the times mark themselves. So they're really helpful, saves you a bit of time there. Just going to show you a quick thing in the student account. I do have another video that guides students through how to make an account. If you look at the top right of this video, you can see a little card has appeared. Click that card to go to that video uh, and you can send this to your students as well to help them set up their own Edmodo accounts. The one thing I would like to point out on making a student account is the class code. The class code is an automatically generated code, which means only students from your class can join that class. I discussed this class code in my other video about setting up a class on Edmodo. Check that out. OK, making a teacher account. I'd strongly advise you to use your school email address in this field here. What I tend to do uh, to ensure that all my posts are working, I do make myself a teacher account and a student account and a parent account using three different email addresses just so I can see what it looks like on each of the pages. For this, I use my school email address for my teacher account uh, and a personal email address for the other two accounts. So I'd strongly advise using your school e email address for this. So making your teacher account what we've got to do first off is get yourself your email address. So type in your school email address and generate yourself a password. As per usual over here uh, it does give you a rating of how strong your password is which you can change different factors to make it a stronger password for example putting in different numbers uh, and symbols capital letters in different places, etc, etc. So uh, terms of service here and privacy policy there. I've discussed this in a previous video, um, but it's very useful for you to review that anyway. Uh, create your account. The next page it takes you to asks you for what you want your name to appear as. Uh, you are very welcome, obviously, just to leave it as a sort of formal version like that. Uh, this is how it will appear on your profile and it can be edited later. See what it's gone for, what would you like to do first? You can set up a class, you can explore your interests. Uh, and if you already have a code, so if somebody else in your school has already set up a class, uh, the class is for students and groups are for teachers. So some of the teachers in your school might already have uh, a teacher group on this. In that case, you can type that in here. For now, let's just go explore your interests. So, so here's what your homepage will look like once you have created an account. Next, what we need to do is ensure your privacy settings are set to the right security level. You can access your profile in a few different ways. You can go up here in the top right, uh, or you can go here where it says view profile. Those of you who are familiar with Facebook um, should find Edmodo pretty easy um, because it's got a very, very similar user interface here where on the top right, you can see your notifications uh, and here you can access your profile. Um, these different sections we will look at in a bit more detail in a future video, uh, but these are really, really helpful. So let's make sure those security settings are nice and tight on your profile. 
let's go to settings here you can add your school this is really helpful so you can connect with other teachers and students can find you easily so all that you need to do is type in your school name uh, I'm just going to make one up Uh, there we go. So let's go for Vale First Middle School Worthing. Um, the more, as you can see with this school in particular, um, the more teachers there are that have an account with it, the easier it is to find. So there we go. There's 21 plus these two uh, as well for this one. If you can't find your school, uh, there is a button there for that. So can't find your school. In which case you can make an entry for that school just by typing in these details here. So select what country you're in. Uh, obviously, this is an American website, so it's gone for state and zip. Um, don't worry too much about that. And then you can change what level you teach as well. This is set to an American system. So if you understand the grading system there, you're very welcome to set it to it. Uh, I tend to just leave it blank. Um, you can make yourself an Edmodal profile URL um, just so people can find you easily if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, and here's your detail as well. And here's your other bits of details as well. So let's lock it down. Let's get this privacy sorted. Okay. Your profile on Edmodo um, is searchable through Google. Okay. So if you do not want to be found via Google, what you need to do is click this button here so only show profile to my connections that means only your students and other teachers at your school or anyone you make a connection with on Edmodo can actually see your profile page this one here says block connection request that means no additional people can add you um, but again it's very similar to Facebook where if, if someone tries to add you you can turn down that request as well save privacy settings um, what else have we got here? Okay, got the ability here to change your password if you need to. When it comes to notifications, Edmodo does actually send quite a lot of stuff, so you might want to be a bit selective on what you allow them to send to you here. So turn them off, turn them on uh, um, just by clicking these little toggles here. Push notifications. Uh, Edmodo has got an app. The app is pretty good. Um, it's getting better and better as they uh, do the little upgrades there. And once again, uh, you can get notifications on your phone and you can choose which of these that you actually want notifications of. OK, so if you've adjusted those settings to what you need, uh, that is pretty much that's pretty much it done for setting up an account. Uh, I will just give you a quick tour around your profile. You might want to change this and and make this however you want it to be. Uh, you can just like Facebook have a nice little introduction here. So you might say I am a whatever teacher and set that up. Uh, interests again only visible to you, so don't worry about that too much. Experience is which schools you've worked at in different times and your responsibility levels. Uh, schedule, schedule is quite useful. So what we can do with a schedule is you can actually put in times that you are available. Now, if you are stuck at home in quarantine, which I assume most of you are, uh, this is really helpful because it actually shows your students which times that you are available to be contacted and which times that you're very much not. So some of you may have children of your own at home and therefore you are juggling uh, being a teacher with being a parent more so ever than usual. So uh, you might want to say to your students, look, I'm only available at this time, this time, this time. Um, what else have we got? Your qualifications, any links to any websites you've got. So if you have got um, if you have got a TES account, for example, or a TES shop, or if you put any of your other resources online um, or your school website or anything of the like, uh, you can save that there for you for your students to access. You can earn badges for doing different things. Uh, also, you can award badges to your students at a different point. And the most useful bit that you will want on this is the ability to go back to your home page. Um, and then your classes, once you've set up your classes, will appear here. Your groups, which are just for teachers, 
appear on the left hand side here. Your library is pretty much like a, a file storage system. Um, you can link it to a Google Drive if you've got Drive or a OneDrive, so the cloud. Um, uh, you can actually set this up so you've got all your teaching resources here if you want, and then you can share those resources with your other teachers. Okay, that's it for now. Be sure to check out my other videos to see how to set up an Edmodo class and other uses of Edmodo.